In Age of Empires 2, there are different ways to win the game based on the victory condition set. With standard victory, destroying all enemy units and buildings, collecting all relics, or constructing a wonder are all the ways to win the game. On the latter, it's not standard victory that's used however. Conquest is set for this, which means that the only victory condition is to eradicate the enemy. In reality, making the opponent resign is the most common way to win. Now, you probably won't win many games just by sitting at home with your army. In this video, we'll be looking at many different ways to attack your opponent. It's not as simple as selecting all of your army and then attack moving across the map, though this is sometimes the best option. If you have an overwhelming army advantage, use it before your opponent can build up a force to stop you. There are four types of attacks that I'll be going through. Skirmish, Raid, Assault, and Siege. Before going through these, we should go through some general tips that will help in a variety of situations that will come up when attacking. The most important rule before going for an attack is to spend all of your resources, especially wood. 10 seconds before you send your units in, check your wood count and if it's a bit high, spend it on a farm or more production buildings. In Feudal and Castle Age, a high wood count is over 100, but in Imperial Age you can sometimes get away with floating a bit more if you already have enough farms and production buildings to keep your units producing. Really, any time that you're not at maximum population, you should keep your resources as low as possible. Getting in the habit of spending before attacking will help you, especially if you like to control your units a lot mid-fight. There are many times when microing a fight is much more important than going back to your base and making a few farms, so it's best to get this over with before the fight starts. Whenever you see an enemy unit and you're not completely sure what your opponent is doing, you can select that unit to see what upgrades it has. The more upgrades a unit has, the more your opponent is investing into that unit line. If you see two knights in Castle Age but they have no upgrades, then your opponent is probably going crossbowmen and not knights. Those knights are probably just there to pick off some of your siege units. If you see a few knights and get baited into making pikemen, you'll end up losing to crossbowmen. Another reason to check a unit's upgrades is to determine if you can take a fight or you have to retreat. If the opponent has skirmishers, you can often fight them with your archers if the skirmishers don't have padded archer armor. Once armor is researched, retreating and adding scouts, adding your own skirmishers, or going up to castle age are all good plays. The best defense is a good offense sometimes, so if you're attacking your opponent and don't see his main army, keep an eye on the minimap to spot a counterattack coming in. You might feel like you're destroying your opponent with your attack, but when you go back to your base to macro, you might find that you've just lost 20 villagers to a small raid. Another similar idea is to look at the minimap when you're being attacked, in case you're being hit in multiple places at once. It's simple to hear the attack notification and respond to that one area that the enemy is in. If there are more than one attacks at a time, it can get more complicated. If your opponent is attacking you with what seems to be only part of his army, you should be suspicious of a second attack coming in at a different location. You can apply this in the other direction as well. When you're attacking, if you can afford to split your units, forcing the opponent to react in multiple locations is much more difficult for them. Splitting up your army makes them easier to defeat by the opponent's main army, so it's not always better to split up. We'll be revisiting this idea later. Knowing when to attack can be a bit tricky sometimes. You might feel like if you move out, your army will just die and you'll lose the game. Using the following tips, you're more likely to hit a stronger timing where you can actually win a battle for once. The most common timing is when an upgrade completes. When going archers, attacking as fletching completes can be very strong if the opponent doesn't have that upgrade since the extra range allows you to pick off enemy archers without taking any damage. Using this knowledge, you can also understand that you can delay researching some upgrades until you're just about to move out. There's no point in rushing out fletching and possibly idling your town center for it if you're not going to be fighting right away. 
The same applies in Castle Age when deciding between getting more knights or chain barding armor. You'd rather build up as many knights as you can, then move out, then get the plus 2 armor, and it'll be done while your units are moving towards the opponent's base. This same example also includes another point. Attack as soon as you stop unit production. If you make knights in early Castle Age until you run out of banked gold, attack as soon as your stables can't keep production running. While your knights are going forward, you can get husbandry and additional blacksmith techs to buff your attacking units. With this concept, you don't necessarily attack when you run out of resources. Maybe you've just built however many units you feel will be enough, and then want to save for an expensive upgrade such as Castle Age or Thumbring. There's also a point at which you can stop unit production in favor of town center and villager production. If you can't win the game with the units that you're making, stopping production and investing those resources into more economy or better technology can be better. If you've just defended an attack and the opponent just lost a lot of army, this can be the best time to go for your own attack. Counterattacking here can force the opponent to make more military, of which you should still have more of as you just want a battle. If you took any kind of economic damage, then counterattacking right away is necessary, otherwise your opponent will have time to build up more military to stop you while being ahead in economy. Even stopping villager production for a while can give you the power to get back in the game. If you lose villagers, you're usually better off trying to make your opponent lose villagers as well, instead of focusing on replacing your own. If you just can't attack your opponent and you're behind, defending until you're at maximum population can be the best way to catch up. If you're at max pop, then you can at least be sure that the opponent will have roughly the same army size as you. Even if you were behind all game, that can change with a good engagement with maxed out armies. If you don't build any siege, but instead focus on spending your resources on regular military units, you can take a better fight against an opponent who may have overextended with expensive siege units that don't contribute to the fight. The final point for knowing when to attack is reacting to an enemy that's out of position. This could mean when you see the enemy attacking the side of your base that's defended well with a town center or a castle, send your units to attack the opponent's base because he'll have less units there. You might also see some siege units that can be picked off if the opponent doesn't pay attention and his other units are a bit too far away. Reacting quickly to these opportunities can be a good time to attack, just don't get baited into committing unnecessarily before an important upgrade completes. I have one more tip to present before getting into the different types of attacks. You don't have to watch every fight. Actually, you probably shouldn't be watching most fights, at least for the entire duration. Many times, you should only take a fight that you're sure to win, otherwise falling back and making more army is better. If you're sure to win a fight, then you're better off just sending your units in and then focusing on spending your resources a lot of the time. You should still jump back to your army once in a while to check on it, but unit control is not as big of a priority compared to macro usually. This issue is commonly seen when drushing or playing men-at-arms archers. If you spend a minute microing your militia or men-at-arms while your villagers go idle or you float over 400 wood, then you're probably further behind than your opponent without even being attacked. To prevent over-micro, occasionally take a glance at your wood count mid-fight. If you see that you have a lot of wood, send your units somewhere they won't die while you go back home to make some farms and houses or whatever. Keeping your units alive is a higher priority than doing immediate damage, so just running around the enemy base while macroing at home can end up being better than trading your units for one villager kill. Later on, trash war fights are more about pumping out units and positioning them well instead of actually controlling them well. Adding more production facilities and farms, expanding to new wood lines and gold mines, setting up multiple raids, repairing castles, and defending against raids are all much more important than watching the trash fight. Alright, with all that in mind, let's finally go through the different types of attacks, starting with the Skirmish. A Skirmish is a smaller fight to control a position or take out an army. Most fights in Feudal Age are Skirmishes because the army sizes are smaller, and good positions can lead to raids to hurt one player's economy. Picking off enemy military units without losing as many of your own can give you map control which will help you go for a forward siege workshop or castle, help you take relics, or even something like take control of extra resources such as the deer in the middle on valley. The point of skirmishing is to get a military advantage over your opponent, which you can use to take even more one-sided fights later. If you do a successful skirmish and then lose all of your units while attempting to raid, you open yourself up to be counter-attacked. 
In Castle Age, a common skirmish will be knights versus knights with some monks in behind. Whoever wins the fight will be able to take control of a forward hill and go for an assault or a siege. The loser will be stuck defending and may even have to switch to pikemen if the situation is really bad. With crossbowmen, trying to skirmish the enemy crossbowmen once you have ballistics can catch them off guard. Again, this can lead to you being able to follow up with another type of attack. In Imperial Age, skirmishes are less common because armies are larger and siege is more common. It can still be worth it to fight over neutral resources and hills, but once a player has a castle to protect those locations, they need to be sieged. As more castles are used to control areas, skirmishes to control areas are less useful. Let's move on to the next one, raiding. Raiding is when you focus on doing damage to your opponent's economy by running through his base or shooting over walls to kill and idle villagers. When sending units past enemy walls, there's always a chance that you'll get your army trapped and destroyed without doing too much damage. Understanding the state of the game will help you to make the decision whether or not to go in. It's a high risk, high reward play, so it's useful to attempt when you need a comeback. If the game is even and your raid fails, your opponent may just counterattack and you'll have a hard time defending. If you're already ahead, it can be a way to close out the game, but it can also be an unnecessary risk. Going for a siege is usually better to finish the game when you're ahead. Raiding over walls with crossbowmen is less risky, though you'll usually split your crossbowmen to cover multiple areas. This can lead to your units getting picked off in lower numbers, which will result in the opponent losing less units. Any time that you lose a lot of military units and your opponent didn't lose as many, you should expect a counterattack. No matter how many villagers you kill, you haven't damaged your opponent's current army, so if you only have half an army at home to defend, then you're in danger of losing even more villagers than you took out. Not losing villagers and replenishing your military count are your priorities after a raid where you lost your army. If you can trade your army against the opponent's army or escape with it, then you won't be in as much danger if your opponent attacks you as long as you can get your units in position to defend. This is more true in Feudal and Castle Age, but can still apply to Imperial Age as well if you have Hussar. You don't always want to send them to raid since you might need them to help stop a siege push from the opponent's main army. If you throw half of your army away to raid at a critical time, you might not be able to stop a push. The next attack type on the list is Assault. This is when you attack an opponent's walls to force them to defend. For this, you don't commit to making forward siege or anything like that, but you try to break walls and other buildings with your core military units such as knights or crossbowmen. Since you're not committing to siege, you should be able to retreat with most of your army if you see your opponent has too much. This is one of the advantages of Assault over Siege. You aren't fully committed to taking out much. You just want to harass a bit and scout what the opponent is doing. If you take down a few buildings or kill a few villagers, that's a bonus. You'll usually want to launch your assault from a position where you can take a good fight if you need to. This is from the top of a hill or near a choke point that you can run towards with your crossbowmen. Of course, if you have cavalry, you can usually just run away without worrying as much about positioning. Setting your military building's rally points to your forward position can help you to take a fight against the opponent's army at as close to full strength as possible. The opponent won't just let you destroy his entire base for free. Eventually, he'll try to push you back and you have to be prepared to tell your units to switch targets from buildings to units. A good timing for your opponent to attack you is when one of his production buildings is about to fall. Waiting until this last possible moment will give him more time to build up reinforcements and will maybe bait you into trying to finish off the building as his units are attacking you. Another thing to watch out for is a counter raid. If the opponent knows your army is forward, this means your base is less defended. Making sure you have proper walls can prevent you from dying to raids. The key distinction between an assault and a siege is that for assault, you aren't committed to attacking to a single location and are usually still focusing on building up your economy. When sieging, you're investing much more into your push. The slow moving siege units need to be protected and you can't just change the location that you're sieging as easily. Sieging is a larger investment into military, so the way that it gains you an advantage is if you force the opponent to spend more resources defending it than you spend attacking. If you can't force the opponent to spend more than you here, then spending your resources on additional town centers or economic upgrades would have been better than siege units. 
if you're not in a position to defend your siege, then you're better off investing into more of your core military units, or working towards Imperial Age if you're in Castle Age. A common way to throw the game is to go for a siege push when your opponent is opening knights in Castle Age. It's difficult to protect siege units against knights, and if you're also trying to make knights, then your opponent will just have more knights than you if they don't make any siege. Adding monks before going siege can be better in this situation. The better play here is probably just to make town centers and defensive monks while you assault with your knights though. Siege pushes in Castle Age tend to be more effective against crossbowmen openings, as mangonels are a great counter to crossbowmen on their own. The defending crossbowmen player will likely add defensive mangonels, so staying on a hill with your mangonels can prevent the enemy mangoes from one-shotting yours. Getting a forward outpost can give you more time to react when an enemy mangonel is near. If you're doing a 1TC siege push, then you can't be content with just one-for-one one trades with your mangonels. Dodging enemy mangonel attacks and repairing your own is the key to building up three or more, which become much more costly to repair a town center against. The one thing that really stops a siege push in Castle Age is a castle. If your opponent is a sieve that is likely to go for a castle to produce their unique unit, such as the Spanish, then going for a siege push in Castle Age is not a good idea unless you know your opponent isn't on stone. If your opponent does get a castle up, then changing the location of your attack or giving up on it to expand your economy is necessary. In Imperial Age, sieging is similar in that you still need to protect your siege with other units, but there's more layers to it as there are more units available to both players, as well as potential for castles to support a siege push in addition to army. Most attacks in Imperial Age are either sieges or raids. Splitting your units up should mainly be done to raid or defend against raids. If you try to assault in multiple places at once, you're likely to get cleaned up by your opponent's army that's all grouped up. Assaulting often doesn't work at this stage, as you can't just clean up castles fast enough without siege. The opponent will just send his units to deal with yours, and then repair his castle. Also, production buildings can be more easily replaced at this stage, so attacking those is not as effective as just raiding villagers. So, if you're attacking in multiple places in the late game, then your goal is to raid, aka kill villagers in town centers. If you're attacking in a single location, then you need to be sieging, which means you need to prepare a proper army to protect your siege before attacking. If you try to siege in multiple places at once, your opponent will more easily be able to pick off your siege units, as both of your pushes will have less units to protect the siege. At this stage, you can't just send units forward without thinking. It's better to plan your siege and then go when you have your army assembled and upgrades complete. If it's not early Imperial Age, attacking once you're maxed out is common. When using trebuchets, building up three or four of them before attacking will allow you to take out castles without your opponent being able to get his army in position to defend or villagers to repair. Researching siege engineers also gives plus 20% damage versus buildings, so if your sieve gets this tech, picking it up will let you take out castles even faster. Supporting your siege with a castle is how you can increase your military strength once you're maxed. The best way to keep your siege pushing is to place a castle on the same hill as your opponent's castle was once you take it out. Then you have a good place to rally more troops to as you lose them. If you control the center and rally troops there, then reinforcing the flanks is a lot easier too. It's worth mentioning that in some games you just have no way to protect your siege units. If you have access to good champions or unique infantry units, then you can use these to take down buildings instead. Since you don't have siege units to protect, this tactic is more of an assault instead of a siege. This also means that attacking in multiple places can be good, so long as you can retreat one side if you see that an enemy army can defeat yours. Using champions in the late game can be the best way to push the opponent when they're going Hussar, as the Hussar may just pick off your siege. Champions reign supreme when gold runs out, so if you can have champions while the opponent just has trash, then you should have the better army. Anyways, sieging requires a bit more planning, but it's the only way to push sometimes. Just to recap, the four types of attacking we've gone over are skirmish, raid, assault, and siege. Skirmishes are when you're fighting the opponent's army on the map to either defeat it or control a position by making it retreat. Raids are when your goal is to pick off villagers, sometimes at the cost of your army. Assaulting is when you use your army to attack the enemy's buildings to get scouting information and force your opponent to defend. 
And finally, sieging is when you commit to an attack with siege units with the intention of clearing out key buildings and controlling a position. Knowing which type of attack to go for will help you make good use of your army depending on how the game is going. If you know the opponent is attacking you with archers, and you know where his army is moving, you can try to skirmish against his units on the map before they do damage to your economy. This is especially useful if you can pick off archers before they become crossbowmen. Raiding is useful when you see an opportunity to do economic damage to your opponent when you can't fight his army directly, such as when you have scouts and your opponent has to chase you with spearmen and archers. The raids in this case are not only doing economic damage, but also keeping your opponent's army at his base so you don't take economic damage yourself. Buying time with a raid can let you build up skirmishers or go up to castle age for knights. In this case, you wouldn't win a skirmish, so raiding is your best option. Assaulting is used when you can win a fight against the opponent's army, and you want to force that to happen. The longer the opponent waits to fight you, the more buildings on the front will be destroyed, and the longer the forward resources are denied. It's basically a way to use your military advantage without overcommitting to siege units, which means you can fall back on a good economy if you need to. Sieging is often the way to actually defeat your opponent, as it will help you to take down town centers and production facilities much faster. Protecting your siege units is your priority, so continuing to send military units to reinforce your army even at the cost of economy is better. If you skip villager production for a while to get enough army to crush your opponent's army at his base, then you'll be able to kill more of your opponent's villagers than you would have created yourself. This structured attack requires more planning compared to an assault in which it's easier to fall back. Hopefully this all makes sense. Not all units are suited for each type of attack. Knowing the ways in which you can use your units can help you to decide which type of attack to go for. You wouldn't try to skirmish against scouts with men-at-arms since the scouts would just run away. Trying to raid with them and then switching to an assault when you bring reinforcing archers is a better play. Likewise, trying to raid with mangonels probably won't work unless your main goal is to siege. Raiding units should be either fast like cavalry, or have potential to do enough damage that you don't mind losing them, like ballistics crossbowmen. And that just about does it for this one. If you have any questions or want more clarification on the different attack types, feel free to leave a comment down below or join the Discord and start a discussion there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.